Hey y'all, welcome back to Standing with Ashley. I'm Ashley. This is the last story time I'm going to share today. Um, this is a little bit more about LA, but I specifically want to talk about how systemic, um, how the systemic shit worked in LA, because I think it's a really good, uh, lens, no, microcosm, like, it's a good way to see it at, like, a larger scale, and it's easy to take and, like, put on where you live geographically or stuff like that. Um, I specifically want to talk about the relationship between academic institutions and people in poverty. Um, I think that's really important. I already touched on when I was talking in the a little about the hood video um, about how USC has gentrified a lot of South LA, um, Central, South Central, um, which is predominantly black and brown folks, right? Um, and so gentrification is smaller scale colonialism, um, colonizing, colonialism, either way. Um, it's smaller scale, right? It's very much uh, people going in and buying things um, and, you know, flipping them or making them better. Um, and that's what the college does a lot of. They flip, buy these old houses. Um, that belonged to families back in the day and you know families that have been uprooted by systemic uh, violence or whatever right in the incarceration or whatever the sister the system may have done um, they buy these places and they flip them and then they you know give them to the students and um, keep money going th towards the college right don't you already have a sprite open um, and then um, so one of the things I really want to talk about, and this is kind of taking, like, both of my videos that I just did, um, I'm just kind of remembering a lot of stuff about LA, um, and I've never really talked about it. So one of the things is that when I was at Cher, um, and that was the video I made about, like, mental health, um, I remember they had, like, this table of flyers and programs and stuff, um, and so Cher is in downtown LA, um, and downtown LA is uh very much gentrified right um but it's also like right by skid row like skid row is the homeless capital of the, the entire country <clears throat> um homelessness drugs prostitution trafficking things like that right but um ultimately homelessness because the city and the county have never done enough to initiate affordable housing um and then you know big academic institutions are buying up the housing that would be affordable housing and turning it into student housing or faculty housing um either way flipping it right that's the whole that's the whole issue of what a lot of urban landscapes are going through um i am specifically talking about la because that's my experience um but anyway so Cher had all of these flyers for like programs and stuff and one of them I took a lot of special interest in because it was a flyer of UCLA and they were looking for volunteers to test big pharma so let's think about that we're at a mental health nonprofit um, uh, an addiction uh, very much addiction nonprofit um, all 12-step programs except the ones that I introduced which were kind of anti 12-step it was more about looking systemically right um, and I don't think those continued after I left I know some folks tried to keep it going but I highly doubt it's you know um, so we're looking at a space that is 12 steps right which means people are facing addiction anger uh, sex addict, right? Like all of these, what the 12 step programs are, alcoholics, narcotics, anonymous, AA, that kind of shit, right? So there's a flyer in this space. There's a whole stack of them. Um, that was from UCLA looking for people to voluntarily take pharmaceuticals to be those testers, right? So when you see a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical commercial and they say, these are, the you know these are the side effects well how do they know that because they've tested that on humans right so it's unethical testing first of all second of all your target audience from an academic institution is to uh, a community of already affected by all of those things folks right so like i remember when i was on big pharma i was on big pharma for i think around eight years maybe not even it felt like forever um, 
but it was while it was before I came to get my master's and then when I my first semester of my master's degree I went off of everything I stopped taking my pharmaceuticals because I realized that I it had completely taken my brain I had no fucking brain I had no memories I had no vocabulary I had no idea what was going on I was so cloudy um, and that's done by design and that's you know why I entered into the field and chose the studies that I did because I was like this happened to me I'm watching it happen to all of these other people right here um, and that's what you know how can we combat that right so anyway um, they were giving $50 gift cards to people to do pharmaceutical testing um, <clears throat> But, like, that is so unethical, and that's all academic institution. And I think, I just want to put in a little side note here, or footnote, really, that my my master's degree um, and the program that I went through and the college that I went to was incredibly unique. Um, so I went through Prescott College, and they their whole aspect was experiential education. And unfortunately, from what I've heard, the program that I went through has kind of been disbanded because the college... Uh, chose to go more of a like environmental route than like and it's predominantly white folks right so the social justice field has pretty much been disbanded um, my master's degree is in social justice and human rights the year after us the program was changed to social justice and community organizing the only other country or the only other college that has a human rights program that I knew about was I think it was Denver because when I was researching, I mean, that was back in the day, and that was like 2014, no, 2012. Um, I was researching programs because I was either going to do like the Peace Corps or do a master's program in human rights somewhere. Um, and the only reason I chose Prescott, well, there were lots of reasons that I was led that way, but I chose Prescott because they didn't make you do uh, an entry exam. <laughs> like, I'm not good at taking tests. And the whole philosophy is experiential education. So I just want to say that while I'm being... Um, critical of academic institutions the academic institution in which i was doing all of this in was incredibly different than these other academic institutions okay this is a tiny ass school it was started by a bunch of hippies um like in the 60s you know it's not federally funded it's not county funded it's like donor funded uh, alumni funded um it's a private school but i just want to say is that the program itself gave me the opportunity to be critical of education, which is not usual for education or academic institutions, okay? So that's the thing I want to say. This program that I was in taught me how to think critically. We took decolonizing classes. We learned about social movements, right? It was based deeply in human rights, in the belief of human rights, in belief of a better world is possible, right? Which is not most academics <laughs> institutions. So UCLA is pushing pills on these folks. USC, so UCLA and USC were the big colleges that I noticed in Skid Row. USC would do a lot of research with folks um, on the ground. So they would, LA Cam, well, let me tell you quick. So there would be like individual students or like classes or something, humanities, whatever. Um, who would come into Skid Row and again interview folks and give them like five to twenty five dollar gift cards for their time, right? Again, looking at the amount of money that these colleges make, that these students are paying into tuition, um, all of it, and then thinking about the ways in which they are preying upon those in poverty. Um, folks with these addiction issues, folks who are experiencing homelessness, and just giving them something so small. Um, it's absolutely horrendous and embarrassing and completely unethical. Um, important. So yeah, UCL, USC would do that. Um, I know Baby Daddy has done work with both of the colleges. Um, he doesn't really do anything with USC anymore, but he like does it organizationally, like LA Can. That's how I met them all. Um, I did my practicum through LA Can. That's the Los Angeles Community Action Network. That's where Baby Daddy works. That's where I did my research and my practicum um and then I was you know naive woman whatever I romanticized it right um so anyway that's fine <laughs> but anyway so 
like as my program we went to LA the first month or three weeks of my program we started in LA and we I had an internship at LA can so that was back in 2014 um, and then we did we were in Tucson and then we were in Prescott and then we went I was in a TA an undergrad TA so we took the undergrads back to LA and then f that trip to LA I was like I want to do my research here and then I went back at the end of that school year for 2015 summer um, and then that's when the baby daddy situation started um, arose and then I was like back and forth to LA and Prescott um, all of 2015 and then I got married in 2016 stayed in LA and then did other stuff until 2020 now I'm in Arizona anyway <laughs> just a little backdrop for you but I think that the most interesting thing about it is the way that and it's not just academic institutions but I think that's a really big important part and I think it's it's it, what's interesting is that we had to take an ethics course and we had to take a what was it we had to take a course about ethical research um, in my master's program and so I just think it's so interesting that as an institution the colleges themselves are preying on folks but when I saw that flyer about the pharma testing um, looking for people I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they were, but it makes sense, right? Because those are disposable people, right? It's the haves and the have-nots. And it's like, we don't really give a fuck about these people. What can we get from them? Um, and they don't care about the impacts, right? Um, all they care about is quantifying something so that they can push it to the FDA and they can get it approved. And then, then big pharma and um, medical institutions and academic institutions. Also, the county hospital was run by USC, and let me tell you, that was the worst place in the entire... I ended up in USC on a couple occasions um, in 2017, and it was... It's the most atrocious hospital ever. It's a county-funded hospital, but it's USC, and it's absolutely horrendous. The way they treat people there is absolutely horrendous. So I just want you to understand the scope um, that academic institutions have within all of these sects, again, S-E-C-T-S, um, of society, right? And who it is that gets used and abused, um, and then just thinking about the disposal of these folks, right? So once these folks go through these trials for $50, a $50 gift card, right? Their brain has been completely altered by this medicine, by this pharma. Like, that's unbelievable. And the fact that it's mostly addict, like, I, I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe it when I saw that flyer sitting at this table that does all of these AA and uh, anonymous programs. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I don't what's the missing piece here? Why are we doing this? Why are we allowing this flyer to be here? Why are we reaching out to this group of folks, right? So that was a big moment for me to realize the depth of corruption, I guess, and just the, the way that no matter what, folks who are already going through so much are going to constantly be preyed on. And I talked about that in my other two videos, uh, specifically the mental health one, not really the, the hood one. But I just... And that's why you have folks banding together in their communities to look out for each other, right? It makes sense, right? When you, when you pull back the layers of what's really going on, someone's got to protect someone, you know? Um, Ellie Can has a community watch program and we were working on coming up with like a mental health response. Um, I don't know if they've continued forward with that, but that was like what I was doing a lot of research on. Um, while I was there, I was like, well, we can, you know, add another arm to the community watch stuff and be like, if someone's having a mental health crisis, because there have been shootings in Skid Row, the police kill people having mental health crisis, um, quite often. Um... So, you know, we were working as an organization to get, you know, something going where we could respond to mental health crises before the police um, and really de-escalate folks. That's what a lot of the work I was doing after my thesis. Um, after I finished my master's degree, I stayed there and was doing that work. Um, and then I started the mental health groups. Um, ultimately, though, if you don't... The bottom line is that if people are... 
if human rights are not being met, right, basic as human rights, no access to food, no access to water, no access to shelter, no access to clothing, no access to the things that make you, it's basic as human rights. If those are not being met, people are struggling. Um, I mean, it's third world conditions all over this country. And that's the thing, this is not specific to LA, if you took what I'm saying and looked at your area, um, if you work at a college, if you work in a hospital, look at who they're testing on. Look at who is being preyed upon. If you look at the homelessness, if you look at the churches, it's the same fucking model all over the place. It's just very, it was very easy for me to see. Um, and I want to put it here because I don't think it's talked about enough um so i hope this helps you i hope this helps you understand that it's not the person asking you for a couple of cents that's the problem that's someone who is trying to literally survive and also it doesn't matter what they spend that money on um i always give people money if they are asking for money i always do you know how much um courage it takes to ask someone for money in this society just give them a fucking couple bucks and it's none of your business and it does not matter what they decide to, ch to spend that on. You go home and you do your vices. You are able to take a bath. You're able to sleep in a warm bed. You're able to change your clothes and do your laundry relatively easy. I mean, you have no idea. A lot of us have no idea what it's like to really be out there on the streets. Um, and we were homeless for a couple months, but we had a vehicle. Um, but it was still in a storage unit, so we would like go to the storage unit, but even that, the storage unit had certain hours, they were closed on certain days, we could only go there on certain days, the parking was a huge situation, um, not to mention, while all of that's happening, the city is passing all of these new ordinances for everybody, I mean, 4118D in LA is that you can't even sit or stand on the sidewalk, or sit or lay down on the sidewalk, and if you do, it's like, it's becoming a felony and now that the federal government is saying um like homelessness can be handled at a state level it's bad and california is a democratic state uh la was a democratic city and that's the thing that's when i stopped believing that there was a separation of you know red and blue because there's not they're all fucking corrupt they're all after money and they're all gonna throw anybody under the bus that they possibly can but i think you really need to understand that when you're watching big pharma commercials those people that had those side effects were the most vulnerable people in society that they tested those on and that's a fact have a good one